Alright folks, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, more gentlemen than ladies I expect on this one in particular. Uh, this is Let's Play Rumble Roses Alternate Forms Edition. Uh, I am Sirius JG, and uh, if you've been paying attention to uh, how I've been doing this, I'm playing the alternates in the same order that I played their uh, defaults, which means that next up is the alternate form of Candy Cane. Candy Cane seems to be the most popular character. She's getting more hits than anyone else. Well, she and Reiko are both getting a lot of hits. But her default form is Becky. Becky's a cheerleader. Huzzah. She's blonde. Boo. Totally more interesting as a redhead. Although, in both cases, it's kind of a very silly fetish archetype character, but still. Oh, that swimsuit looks pretty... Um, yeah. We'll see more of that later. Right now, it's she's got her, like, pigtails and she has flowers in the pigtails, and she's a cheerleader, folks. Cheerleader outfits, pretty revealing. Cheerleader outfits from, like, you know, adult entertainment, even more revealing. She has gone the adult entertainment route. I suppose you could see a real cheerleader wearing something that revealing. I don't know. Yeah, I think that's good. That would raise some eyebrows. Anyway, Candy Can, you remember? She, whoa, game. Are you kidding me with that shot? Wow. But anyway, you remember, she went to an orphanage, and she uh, befriended the Three Stooges and joined the Blues Brothers and um, saved the orphanage. And uh, was really just kind of... had a lot of attitude the entire time, but now she's become a cheerleader. I'm curious how this is going to be explained. Because she was like a punk. Her whole thing was that she was like a non-conformist conformist. I'm going to do all the things that non-conformists do, so I'll belong with a non-conformist. And now she's become a cheerleader. It's like the opposite. Sort of. If I just called her a non-conformist instead of a... Well, anyway. Youth, how friendship. Those kind of things. Oh, good grief. What do you know about Saren? 36, 26, 35. Hey, it's true! What do you know about Sovereign? Cern's flagship? A guy who gets good grades and can play all kinds of sports. A dreamy quarterback is nice. Not necessarily for my team, just any team. Who would you like to meet most with right now? My old game. Just kidding. Actually, he's Spencer. Oh, so she's living in denial. Why did you change That's so much? Easy, silly. I wanted to enjoy the prime of my youth. What do you know about art? <laughs> what do you know about music? Um, all your activities, I guess. How did you start working for Cerberus? I'm like totally busy with homework and club activities. <sighs> Would you like to help the Krogan overcome the general phage? <laughs> Sorry, I've got to do Mass Effect at some point. Oh, good grief! I'm gonna make you all sweat. And I turn up the heat and close all the windows. Chicken wing! Ain't no thing. I'll make you cry. That's just exported over from Candy Cane. They didn't even change it. Which is fine. I mean, she's supposed to be the same girl and all. Just now that she's changed her hairstyle and has become a cheerleader. Good grief. They really didn't bother to explain that at all, did they? I haven't been looking at people's profiles. She's still from Canada. She's still 18. Was she 18 before? I don't freaking know. Chicken Wing Cheerlock! What the f character voice Peggy Wu? Oh, so they got in a presumably an Asian girl to play one of the minority of characters in this game who's not Asian. Well, no, wait. I think there's probably more non Asians than Asians. I'd have to do a count, but that would be creepy. Alright, so Becky is like Candy Cane, except a cheerleader. Let's see if uh, they do some kind of nod towards explaining why she would just suddenly become a cheerleader. I got off into a little side thing about nonconformist conformists there. But uh, no, a cheerleader is not really the opposite of a nonconformist conformist. Now, if you're a true nonconformist, maybe a cheerleader would be the opposite of that, because that's like, oh, what you're supposed to aspire to be if you're a girl in high school. And a true nonconformist is like, you know. And I could do, you know, it's, uh, well, this is an R-rated Let's Play because of the sexual content, so I might as well just say, fuck you, I won't do what you tell me. And I kind of made the non-conformist conformist thing, because I remember them from when I was in high school, and they were really irritating. 
But uh, yeah, let's give Becky the benefit of the doubt. Say she really is, in her heart of hearts, a girl who wants to have a punk band, and she's not just doing that because she thinks it's cool, or has some kind of you know punk ethos that she wants to belong to. And she truly was a nonconformist. She has just completely betrayed her own ideals, be- becoming a cheerleader. I hate Becky already. <laughs> Fictional schoolgirl, you've disappointed me. To to By beating the crap out of me. Now I'm really into it. Busy with both studying and wrestling. I'm in the prime of my youth. Wrestling everyone I meet in the hall. Oh, and to add another extracurricular to my record, I joined the cheerleading squad. I joined the Road Warriors. It's ridiculous, but I suppose it is what it is. So there's a little bit of her spirit still alive I've in there. Turned over a new leaf. With this newfound me, it's time to give the beat down. Psych! What? Anyway, I'm going to make these the best times of my life. I'm depressed. And I'm gonna make you sweat. That's really, that's really depressing. Now I'm like, oh crap, my life's over. Best time of my life has already passed, and it wasn't that great. Thanks, Becky. You bring joy and merriment to everyone but me. <laughs> Sorry. Everything you touch, you destroy. Breasts! <laughs> so these are the Becky cheerleaders. They, they don't cheer for a school, they cheer for another cheerleader. You know, the whole cheer culture is some creepy ass shit. I used to work with somebody who was uh, sort of a cheerleader mom, like a big sponsor of the local cheerleading team. And um, I didn't want, you don't want to criticize cheerleading in front of those people. Not Roddy. You're not Roddy Roddy Piper. That's probably just as well. I really wouldn't want to think about Roddy Roddy Piper jumping around like that in a skirt. Oh, wait, he has spent his whole career jumping around in a skirt. Never mind. Why well, did he do that much jumping? Not Naughty, not Roddy, not Piper, not Sean O'Hare. Sorry. All right, video's halfway over and we haven't done shit yet. Hi, I believe in school spirit. That's what just dove right into your face with a forearm smash. See, now... Makoto was like super nice to Candy Cane and trying to be a friend even though Candy Cane was being really bitchy and there was just a little hint again I'm probably overthinking it but Candy Cane mentioned that she's met new friends in Rumble Roses and that it had been a positive experience for her and you know I think they're alluding to the fact that yeah at some level she's like you know that Makoto girl I'm, I tease her but she's a real good person now she's become a total baby face goody two shoes and yet her first act is to start taking down Makoto I'm sweating Crisco! <laughs> so I used to watch SmackDown. And um, one of my favorite SmackDown memories was from the era where Michael Cole and JBL hosted SmackDown. And uh, Booker T was in the WWE and he was doing his King Booker gimmick because he won King of the Rings. So we went around acting like he was a king and Charmel was his queen and it was pretty awesome. Because at one point. Michael Cole, in all innocence, I truly believe he had no idea that this could sound offensive to anyone. But uh, he was talking about Booker T. He's getting ready to face Bobby Lashley, and oh, he doesn't want to do it. And he's like, Booker T. is sweating Crisco. We're getting ready to face Bobby Lashley. And uh, so JBL is on commentary with them, and so is Charmel and Booker T. They were like guest commentary and watching a you know Bobby Lashley match or something. So he says, he, Booker T must be sweating Crisco. And JBL just goes, sweating Crisco. Like you can't freaking believe Michael Cole says this. And then um, Charmel is like, was that a racial comment, Michael Cole? And uh, Michael Cole's like, what? What are you talking about? And JBL's like, I apologize, King Booker. I don't know what he's thinking about. And Michael Cole, who I really don't think meant to be offensive by referring to you know, black people sweating Crisco. <laughs> Just goes on to say, Crisco is racist? How is Crisco racist? And everyone else tries to move on. But Michael Cole won't let it go. He's like, you know, trying to defend himself. He's like, 
Chris goes white and it comes in a blue can. How is it racist? It was pretty hilarious. So when uh, Becky starts saying, I'm going to make you sweat, I start thinking, Chris go is racist? That was a really weird looking knee lift Makoto was trying to do that I blocked. But anyway, enough about Crisco. Let's let's try at least to talk about Becky. Uh, so Candy Cane uh, saved the orphanage, but decided to go back to school and become a cheerleader, even though that goes against everything we thought which she believed in. And she's gonna beat up Makoto, which uh, that does not go against everything she believed in. She was all about beating up Makoto. But um, what else? In Double X, Becky freaking sucks. Becky's useless. Candy Cane's a monster because she starts with a weapon, and it's the strongest weapon in the game. As ludicrous as it sounds, you can win a match in like 30 seconds by just constantly whacking people in the face with your guitar. But, um. I'll make you cry, I'll make you cry bitch. That's what I'm all about. Oh, it's an arm submission, which means it's totally not going to work here. It's beautiful. But Becky does not have a weapon. What she does have is the same horrible stats that Candy Cane has, where the only thing she's supposed to be good at really is she's somewhat good at evading and she's mostly good at cheating. She has like no moves that have any impact whatsoever and she doesn't start with a weapon. So um, basically she just becomes one of the hardest people to win matches with. And like the ninja characters, because she's got really high evade, she's kind of difficult to defeat. It takes a while because she keeps evading everything. So she's just, she's no fun to play as, she's no fun to play against. Becky sucks. That's uh, what the boys on the football team say too. Hoo -hoo. They say Becky swallows. Boom, boom. In the meantime, every time I play against Makoto, I keep thinking, A, how much I like the Black Belt Demon, even if I think of the Let's Play of her story will suck as much as all of the alternates, because she didn't have a real story for me to make fun of. But B, it makes me think of how much I missed Let's Playing as Makoto, because that was a hell of a lot of fun, just making this sweet, pure, innocent, nice Japanese girl constantly talk about breaking people's legs. Good times. Ow! Yeah. Alright. Yeah, that's an interesting pinning combination. But uh, we're going to have to end it there, folks. Uh, these I don't want to stretch these things out any more than I have to. There's really... I run out of things to say very quickly in these alternate stories because the word story is pretty much in quotation marks. <laughs> Becky's story is she's become a cheerleader. Huzzah. Uh, you can focus in on the uh, panty shot there if you want. See? I f forgot that you can do this, but you can get rid of the... Uh, that thingy. But uh, I'm going to have to end this video. When we come back, I'll finish off, you know, we'll, we'll pin Makoto, and uh, I'll see what her other non, her killer and non-lethal move is in the next match, and um, eventually, uh, somebody or other will show up and talk to Becky, the cheerleader, because everybody's story mode consists of them having one conversation with one other person in the entire world. We'll see that probably in video three uh, coming up very soon. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.